how's it going? I'm so, so glad that you did not click out of this video because this can be a topic that's really intimidating to a lot of parents, but I want to share with you how I talk with my kids about sex, puberty, reproduction, and all the things. So I, oh my gosh. Okay. So where to start? I was a really young mom with my first. And so I didn't really know how all of this was going to go. I didn't know when I wanted to start talking with her about it. I only knew from my own experience. And I feel like my experience talking about reproduction and puberty and sex and all the things with my mom especially was a really positive thing. So the part about it that I wish was different is that I wish that we could have started having the conversation a little bit earlier. I feel like we didn't really start talking about sex and that kind of thing until it was right around the time when I started my first period. So I kind of wished and I knew that I wanted for my own kids to start talking about it earlier, but I didn't really know what that was going to look like. But then it kind of hit me square in the face. As a teacher, you go to all kinds of trainings. and so. I went to one that was very sad. It was really unfortunate that this training even had to be a thing, but it was not about sexual abuse. It was about how predators groom children for sexual abuse. And my mind was blown. My naive mom mind was blown. And the thing that sticks with me the most is that they said that children who don't know how their body works they don't know what their body parts are called are children who are less likely to report being hurt or abused by an adult. That blew my mind and right then I went home and I started talking to my daughter about her body, about how bodies work and all of that kind of thing. So this is just a few tips that I have kind of compiled in my 10 years of parenting my daughter and now things that I'm going to be using with my son as well as he kind of grows up and starts learning about his body body and that kind of thing. So the first thing is to start the conversations early. My daughter was two when she first learned the medical terms for what her body parts were called and what the body parts of little boys were called. So we talked about what girls have and we talked about what boys have. We talked about all of the different things and dynamic. Of course, I kept it age appropriate. That's something to remember in these conversations. If you're going to start talking to your toddler, your preschooler, your kindergartner, and that kind of thing about what their body parts are called, about how their body works, that kind of thing. Make sure that you keep it age appropriate. Make sure that you use simple terms. Make sure that you keep your conversations maybe even on the shorter side that so that your kiddo has time to maybe absorb the information and come back and ask questions. I know that my daughter always kind of thought about it. We would have a little bit of a conversation after she asked a question and then she would come back and ask me more questions. So there were always moments for her to kind of reflect on it and I started really young and so she knew that it was just something that was normal and that we talk about in our house. So the first thing is to start as young as you are comfortable with because again if you keep it as just a normal part of your everyday conversation it doesn't make it weird it makes it just something that you talk about as a family and something that you're teaching your child along the way the second tip that i have for you is to use those real names for body parts so my daughter was so proud that she has a vagina when she was small and i hope that this story isn't embarrassing to her later but when she was young we were at the grocery store once and she was just announcing to everyone I have a vagina and I'm a girl and I'm not a boy so I don't have a penis and so she was just really proud and she knew the names of her body parts and she knew what the names of boy body parts were so I thought that it was really important to make sure to teach her the real names of her body parts the real names for body parts are maybe not something that we as a society are super comfortable talking about and I think a lot of parents even feel uncomfortable talking about the real names for you know you know, our reproductive body parts. And you need to make sure that if you are going to teach the real names of real body parts, that you are not giggling and laughing. You need to make sure that you just use it like it was any other word. I know that I kind of struggled with that because using real names for body parts, especially at a young age, was not really something that we did in my house when I was growing up as a kid. So it took me a little bit to actually use those real names for body parts and not giggle about it as well. So make sure that you just use it like any other word and 
answer your child's question with real body part names. The next tip that I have is look for everyday opportunities to talk about how bodies change, how animals in nature even, how their bodies work and how their bodies are the same as ours and how they're different. I used to take my daughter to the zoo a lot and a couple of times in the monkey exhibit, the monkeys were making a baby. They were doing their thing and my daughter would ask, you know, are they wrestling? And we would have a conversation that no, the monkeys are not wrestling. That's just how they make a baby. And I would say probably until she was eight, it never led to questions about, well, is that how you and dad made me? That kind of thing. So it's unlikely that your child will make those connections before they start entering the early phases of puberty. They might hear other things from their friends as well. So you wanna make sure that you use an everyday opportunity to talk with your kids about bodies, about reproduction, and about how our bodies work. The next tip that I have is that we have a policy in our house that is, if you ask a question, I'm going to answer it. So. My daughter sometimes has like started to ask a question and then she's like, wait a minute. I don't want to know the answer to that yet because she knows that I am going to be honest with her and that I am going to share as much information as I feel that she needs to know at that time surrounding that question. So that's another kind of tangent on this one. I answer her question, but I do it in an age appropriate way. So if she were to ask me how a baby was made, I would give her an age appropriate answer depending on what age she was at. And as she gets older, I would share more information and usually she would say you know where do bat babies come from and then it turned out well how does the baby get inside of the mom's belly or inside of the mom's uterus because we use that we use that term and then she would ask things like how does the baby come out and that kind of thing so we did a lot of discussing about it I'm someone who really likes to watch birth videos so my daughter has seen babies born on videos lots and lots of times. She knew exactly what was going to happen when I went to the hospital to have her brother and she chose not to be there. So she would ask questions and I would answer them openly and honestly, but I wouldn't overshare. So I would keep it age appropriate. So you got to kind of have that fine balance, but definitely be open and willing to answer the question. There have been a few times though, I must say that she'll ask a question and I'm not quite sure how I want to answer it. So it's okay to say something like, you know, I really appreciate that you are coming to me with this question, but I'm not sure exactly how I want to tell you about this right now. So could I get back to you in a couple of days? And she's always been okay with that. Just make sure that you do come back to your child, remind them of the question that they ask, ask them if it's still a question, remind them that there are other pieces and ask them if they have more questions and then make sure you do answer that question and give them the information. I know from experience that if you're not answering your child's question, they are going to get the information. Our kids are growing up in a world where they have the internet at their fingertips, where they have what I would say a skewed visual perception of how healthy sexual relationships work at their fingertips. They have videos of all of the things and it sometimes is not very nice. So it's either you're going to answer their question or they are going to learn based on internet photos and videos and their friends. And so it's, it's kind of a toss up. Like, how do you want them to learn about healthy relationships, how their body should be treated and how their bodies work? The next tip that I have for talking with your kids about body changes, sex, and all the things is tell them that this is not at all information that should be shared with their friends. So some families are not as open as other families and that is okay. That is how they have chosen to parent and that is how their family works. But, our family isn't that way. We're a little bit more open with sexuality, with, we're a little bit more open with how bodies work, all of those things. But I always tell my daughter that when I give her this information, it is not hers to pass around to her friends. Number one, school is not a place to be talking about sexuality and that kind of thing unless it is in a guided conversation with a teacher. That's just my opinion. Number two, she might tell it wrong. <laughs> you know, she might go back and she might miss some of the details and tell it wrong and give information that her friends might receive and use as, you know, real research information that they want to know. And then third, again, it might not be something that her friend's family is ready to talk about with them yet. So I always remind her that these are conversations for home. These are not conversations for school. These are not conversations for friends. So 
that is kind of a guideline and a rule that we have placed in our conversations about sex, sexuality, and how bodies work. So the next tip that I have for you is to teach your kids about both privacy and boundaries. I have started potty training my son and it's really important to us to teach him that it's okay for him to ask for privacy. He doesn't have to have us in there. And so he kind of goes back and forth. Like he will ask me for space. He'll ask me to walk out of the bathroom and give him privacy sometimes. And that's okay. It's totally fine for him to want to have privacy. I've also taught my daughter that as she gets older, her body is going to change and she might not want me to come in and hand her soap in the shower, or she might not want me to come in and wash her hair. She might not want me to come into the room when she's changing and that's okay. I've also told her that it is okay to set boundaries with your body. If you don't want to give a relative a hug, that's fine with me. It might make them feel uncomfortable. It might make them feel a little bit rejected, but it is your body and you get to make decisions about it. So it's really important to teach them boundaries. I feel like unhealthy boundaries or teaching your kids that they are not the owners of their bodies, that is something that can lead to unhealthy behaviors later in life, or it can lead to them not knowing what is okay, when is okay to say no, those kind of things. So I always want my kids to know that they can set boundaries, that they are the owners of their bodies, and that it's okay to ask for privacy. And then the last thing that I wanted to bring up is the talk. So in our family, we don't have a talk necessarily. If there's information that I feel like my daughter needs to have, I bring it up at an age appropriate time. Again, she has questions and at this time she feels really comfortable bringing me her questions. She talks to me about these kind of things. She's curious for sure as she's moved closer towards puberty her questions become a little less innocent and a little bit more information seeking and curious that kind of thing but I would 100% rather foster and facilitate that curiosity and relationship with my daughter than to have her seeking information elsewhere that could be really, really unhealthy for her. So again, I only have experience currently parenting a 10 year old approaching puberty girl. Things will likely be different with my son, but a lot of these approaches are going to be the same. I'm cool teaching him boundaries. I will answer any questions that he has, or if he doesn't want to ask questions of me because I'm a female, he's welcome to take them to Brian and Brian is on the same page with me on these things. So, you know, it's just something that we have conversations about in our family and it's just something that's normal. If you have a way that you have talked with your kiddos about how their bodies work, about you know sex and reproduction and how puberty happens and you feel like it would be really helpful to our community feel free to leave those down below I would love to hear about them I think that it's something that we can all learn from because this can be a really difficult parenting topic so I hope that you guys liked this video I hope that it was really helpful to you as you guys are all going through your different stages of parenting and if you have any more like further questions about what we do in our family as far as like conversations around puberty and that kind of thing feel free to let me know. I would be happy to answer them down in the comments below. If you are not yet subscribed and you're new here, hi, my name is Caitlin and this is Beans and Monkeys. If you would like to, I would love it if you would subscribe. The subscribe button is just right down below. If you are one of my current subscribers, thank you so, so much for being here. I absolutely love each and every one of you and I'm so, so thrilled that you are here. If you would like to know every single time I'm posting a video, there is a little bell notification next to the subscription box. So feel free free to hit that on your way out. And if you want to find me on other social sites, go ahead and find me over on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And by the way, you guys have fun today.